All right, in 1.4, we're going to be talking about how to display quantitative data using what we call a stem plot. All right, another simple type of graph for displaying quantitative data is a stem plot, or you could also see it called a stem and leaf plot. A stem plot shows each data level value separated into two parts, a stem, which consists of all but the final digit, so that's really important, it's all but the final digit, and a leaf, which is the final digit. The stems are ordered from lowest to highest and arranged in the vertical column. The stems are arranged in increasing order out from the appropriate stems. The leaves are arranged in increasing order out from the appropriate stems. So this is what one looks like. So these are the, leaf, the uh, stems right here, and these are the leaves, all right? Each of these represents all but the final digit in the back, what the leaf is, is the final digit. So when you do a stem and leaf plot, it, it will look something like this, but you have to have this key right here, something like this to define what is this. Well, this is picking some number off the stem and leaf plot, two slash eight. What does that mean? It means the soft drink contains 28 milligrams of caffeine per eight ounce serving. So look at all the context that's given in the key. That's really, really important to include lots of context. So here are the steps. How to make a stem plot. Uh, first you make the stems. You separate each, each observation into a stem consisting of all but the final digit and a leaf which is the final digit. Write the stems in a vertical column with the smallest at the top. Draw a vertical line in, at, at the right of this column and do not skip any stems even if there's no data value for that particular stem. And then you add the leaves. You write each leaf in the row to the right of its stem and order the leaves. Arrange the leaves in increasing order out from the stem. And then lastly, most importantly, you have to add a key. Provide a key that explains in context, in context, what the stem and leaves represent. All right, so here's another example. We get a better picture of the data by splitting the stems. Sometimes we need to split the stems. So, um, in graph A, the values of 0 to 9 are placed on the 0 stem. But notice, look what happens. Look, there's tons and tons of data on the 0 stem. And it, it really, there's more to this shape than we would see. So what we did in graph B is we split the stems. So you'll notice that the stems, there's two of each. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, all the way down. And then in that first 0, you would put anything 0 to 4 as a leaf. And then 5 to 9, you'd put the so 0 to 4, and this goes 5 to 9. And it's the same way here. This would be 10 to 14. This would be 15 to 19. So sometimes we use split stems so that we can see the shape of the distribution more clearly. That's why you would want to split the stems. All right, tips to consider before making a stem plot. Okay, there's no magic number of stems to use. Too few or too many stems can make it difficult to see the distribution of shape. Generally, the idea is that five stems make a good minimum. If you do split the stems, make sure that each stem is assigned an equal number of possible leaf digits. Like I said, the first one would go zero to four on the leaves, and the second would go five to nine. When the data have too many digits, you can get more flexibility by rounding or truncating the data, which we're not going to mess with that a whole lot, but it's there for you. So sometimes we can use what's called a back-to-back -back stem plot with common stems to compare the distribution of a quantitative variable in two groups. Okay, The leaves on each side are placed in order on each side of the common stem. So in this example, looking on how many pairs of shoes does a teenager own, and we're comparing females to males. So because these are comparable, we're going to put them on a back-to-back -back stem plot. Notice the stems stay the same for both of them, and we split them. There's two zeros, two ones, two twos, two threes, and so on and so forth. And then you would build your leaves out for males on the left, on the right, and the females on the left. Okay, so this is what you call a back-to-back -back stem plot. I'm not going to have you work on this up a lot. I just want you to know what it is, okay, and how to read it. All right, so let's try to make one ourselves. Okay, here's the resting heart rates of 26 ninth grade biology students. 
make a stem plot of these data. All right, so the first thing I recommend you do when you make a stem plot is locate the highest value in your list of data and the lowest value, because that'll help you determine what your stems will be. Okay, so if I, if I look up through this, looks like um, 86 is the highest. Is there anything lower than 48 as I skim through this? No, there's nothing lower than the 48. So that's going to help me know what my stem should be. So I know I have to start with 4, and I need to go at least to 8. So 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I draw a vertical line. So the first digit is the stem, and then the last digit is the leaf. Now, it's not just the first digit. It's everything but the last digit that makes the stem up. So now for the leaves, let's put these in order. So I look at what 40s do I have. I have this 48. Do I have anything else? No. So I can put 48 right here. It's the only 40-something I have. Now with the 50s, let's look at what I have. I have just 150 at 55. So I can put 55. And then for 60s, I have 61, 60. If I have 60, I could start there. And then how many 61s do I have? Just 151. I put the 1 down, then I put a 62. Is there a 63? Yes, there's a 63. 64. 65. 66. There's two 66s, so I need to get the two of those to represent the two data points. 67, 68. I don't see a 68. All right, so moving to 70s, I do have a 70, I have two 70s, so I need to put two zeros. 71, yes. 72, yes. Oh, wait, I have two 71s, sorry. 71, one, and then 72. No 73s, I have two 74s. And then a 75. 76, no, 77, 277, so I need two of those, 78, and 79. And then in the 80s, I just have this one, 86. Okay, so I've done that, and then I need to make my key. When you make your key, you can pick any point you want out of this, and it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm just going to use 6 and 1. And so what am I, I've got to define what this is in context. Okay, 6, 1, what that represents, a ninth grade biology student with a resting heart rate of 61 beats per minute. Okay, include the context of the question. It's really, really important that you do that. All right, so using the simplot, we're going to uh, answer some questions. All right. Or what percent of these next grade biology students have resting heart rates below 70 beats per minute? So I'm going to go back to that screen. Okay, remember there's 26 total. And how many are below 70? So what I need to do is look at my sim plot. Remember this is 70 right here. And I need to check, figure out how many are below 70. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 out of 26. So now I can come and calculate this. So 11 out of 26 gives me 0.423, which is 42.3%. All right. B says describe the shape of the distribution. Okay, if I do broad strokes and think what is the shape of this, this is symmetrical. Okay, there is a gap right here between 40 and 55. It's not huge, but there is a gap, and there's um, a peak in the center in the 70s somewhere in here, okay? So that gives us a good description. So we come back and we write this down. So what is the shape of this distribution? We would say it is fairly symmetric with a single peak on the 70 to 79 and has small gap between 48 and 
five beats per minute. Okay, it's a small gap, may not be really an outlier, but it might be. So C, what it, what value appears to be an outlier? So if you look at it, this 48 over here could be an outlier. In later videos, we're going to show you how to know if it really is. But right now, we're just kind of guesstimating which one's more separated from the, the rest of the data. Well, the 48 is the most separated. So we would say um, that 48 beats per minute appears to be an outlier. All right? So that's what you're going to do. You're going to build me some stem plots and describe them in the same way we did here in the video. All right? Good luck, and we'll see you guys in class.